The lumber industry on the Warm Springs Reservation dates back to the 1860s, when the U.S. government first built sawmills to provide lumber for homes for the Wasco and Warm Springs bands and clans that had relocated from the Columbia River region, as outlined in the Treaty of 1855. This spring, the Warm Springs Forest Products Mill, which had operated as a tribal enterprise since the 1960s, closed. For the many workers who ran the mill for the past 50 years, it is the end of an era. KWSO wanted to capture the recollections of mill workers to celebrate the mill as an economic engine for the Warm Springs tribes, providing jobs and revenue for most of the years that they were in business. Willard Tiwi worked at the mill and talks about the impact that that job had on his life. My name is Willard Tiwi, also known as uh, Suwak. I'm just here uh, going to share my feelings about the mill closure. I started work at the mill on December 22nd, 1992. It was good that Teresa finally took a chance on a 43-year-old tribal member. I loved that job. I started on the bottom. I was cleanup man, which was $11 an hour, eight hours a day. It was good. I love stability, so I, I do need to have a job. I loved having that job. So every day I would go to work, do my job, and go home. And the rewards have been wonderful. I've got a car, a home, bills. But, you know, I would not have all this if it was not for employment at the mill. And uh, it also gave me responsibilities, something I, I really needed at that time. I am 24 years clean from alcohol and drugs, and I thank the Lord for that. Sharon Miller worked at the mill for over 19 years and talks about the work she did throughout that time. I was oiler for about, about four years, I think the first four years, a uh, graveyard shift oiler, the sawmill. Got gear motors, there's different size gear motors that use different weight. You have to check the oil levels in those and change those every year. You got hydraulic tanks, you have to keep those full. Then you have uh, filters you change every year change out your oil if it uh, runs continuous all day you need to change that because you get like a sweat inside the tank water like that builds up so you have to change that out and you have uh, air oilers that's for some equipment that's operated by air that keeps that flowing smoothly you have different lubrication oils uh, that helps on some of the bearings and some of the equipment that kind of moves back and forth at that time, they had just a small log mill, and they added the big mill side about five years later. I got to be too much, so I put in for a cleanup job and moved to the planer. The planer, that's a finished product. The lumber comes from the sawmill rough, goes through the dry kills first, and a lot of it's dried. And it comes to us, and we plane that. It smooths it all out, and it, it just has a real nice finish on there. And I was a trim saw operator and trimmed the ends. Francis Sorrelhorse worked at the mill for the last three years and briefly talks about his experience there. I worked at the mill for one year of it in the sawmill. There's uh, two sides, the big side and the small side, and each of them have at least four to five machines. Mainly, there's a long chain. You just make sure the boards are going through correctly. There's one, uh, the off gang, the uh, horizontal, which cuts the boards, sends it to the board edger, then I moved to shipping, where we loaded trucks all day long. Just loaded trucks all day, pretty much. Yeah. Nothing too out of the ordinary. And I was a forklift operator. Jason Rabbi worked at the mill for the last 13 years and 20 plus years altogether throughout his life. Actually, I worked there right out of high school. Uh, it provided a lot for me and my family. Uh, I had a lot of memories down there. I know a lot of people in the community. You know, it provided a lot for my family. I, I went through a four-year vocational training to be an electrician, then I signed up to be a sawmill supervisor, and I supervised for four and a half years. Like you said, the memories, you know, when I see some of these people in the community, I know it reminds me of something that we did down at the mill, something, you know, that we went through, something we joked around about, you know, something we worked on, something, we, you know, I, I spent half, most of my time down there than I did at home, and a lot of people in the community didn't really know you know, like, where you been? You know, I work. I go to work and I go home. <laughs> and that's, I mean, that was my life, you know. 
Eldred Smith Sr. worked at the mill altogether 31 years, well over half of his life, and talks about how that kind of work was his calling. Started there on September 9th, 1976. It was work, it was, it was real manual labor. Everything we did was, it was hard work. I always say I was fortunate, but it just didn't seem like it because it was, you know, the guys that I worked with were the men that came from the, like my father's age, you know, maybe a little younger. But in those days, those guys were different kind of men. You know, they, were, they, they everything was cut and dried. You know, you had to do what they asked you to do, and there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. My my parents raised me that way, so it was kind of easier for me to adjust to that than a lot of my friends. In those days, Warm Springs Force Products was the place to work because of the benefits. It was. A, Pretty good paying job, and, and you and you did a you could you could get overtime any day you wanted, any time. We ran the mill almost 24/7. You know, we ran three shifts at, in every department, uh, six days a week. You know, and I, I, I just kind of worked my way up. I did uh, 24 different jobs at Warm Springs Forest Products. <laughs> I enjoyed working at the mill. I I enjoyed my years there. I enjoyed the camaraderie that you have with your with your friends and some of them were my family. I was in my element when I was at the mill. I was I, I was where where I was the most content and I felt my best. I was a mill worker, you know, and I, I always I could remember when I was eleven years old they took us to the mill and I was in grade school, going to school here at this grade school and they wanted to tour us through there. And I'll always remember that. They walked into the green end where they pulled green plywood. I always remember I liked the way it smelled and I, and I liked the way it looked and I liked the way it felt. And I told my friends at school that next day, I said, I think I'm going to go to work at the mill when I turn 18 years old. And that's where I'm going to work and that's what I did. You know, my mind was kind of made up, you know, when I was a little boy. I'd worked hard as I could and I'm happy with it. And I, was, I was glad to have been that part that, that, that kept that mill going. And, we provide it not only for my family, but my extended family and my and uh, you know the, the families was in the community. We were able to to put money into our tribe and we were able to get dividends from it, huge dividends at some time. I'm happy that I could say I was a part of that. You know that that made this our little world turn down here on the reservation, and, and it was a huge part of it. I hope that someday they'll look back on that, you know, and, and say, you know, those guys. You know, they, they put a lot of sweat and blood, you know. But economically, it was, it was a giant down here in Warm Springs. Fond memories from working at the Warm Springs Forest Products Mill.